Hi everyone, it's Rick St. Dennis. I'm here with another tutorial for you. Uh, this is a digi called 1911 Stroller, which is the style of the hat in the French style. Now, these are all fantasy drawings. I mean, if you really look at this lady, she's very pretty. This hat is kind of a Napoleonic style. It was very popular in France for many, many, many years. I mean, over a century during Napoleon and after. Um, this flower would have to be in her hair. And she would have had to do her hair to wear the hat, if you think about it. So the only time you're ever going to see a hat like this is going to be on a stage in a show. But uh, I just think it's a pretty composition, and that's why I did it. And somebody um, emailed me and said that uh, they didn't understand why my women always looked slightly startled or um, sad. And uh, I let them come out the way they want to come out. I don't uh, manipulate the image as much. Um, it, it just takes a little tiny line to, to give her a little bit more of a smile. But I was thinking when I did this one that she walked down the, the street and some, you know, rude guy said, nice hat lady. And that was the look she gave him. So that's how she came to look this way. Okay, I'm going to start, as always, light to dark and little circles. Start with my lighter flesh color. And um, again, I'm working on the Nina Bristol, which I buy from um, eBay or Amazon. They both have it. And uh, I buy it wherever it's the cheapest. 250 sheets uh, is about $7. Hard to find it cheaper than $6.97. But that's cheap paper, folks. I mean, when you think that some of you are going out and spending over $2 a sheet for this paper, this, you know, special stuff for the Copics, oh, geez, that just breaks my heart. I mean, I'm sure it works well, but uh, really, you, I mean, that would make me nervous. Uh, you, you don't want to ruin a single sheet. At 250 sheets for just $7, I can uh, flip it over and do it on the other side, you know. Okay, that's my light color, and I'm using my... Um, what am I using? I'm using the... Um, ones that polychromos the ones that i got i haven't quite gotten up the nerve to try the um caron d'ache yet they came i have a set of those now i'm going to do this one a little different than i normally do i'm going to start here and i'm going to put her whole eye socket the thing here in this pinkish color this is actually these are so hard to read. <clears throat> I think they consider this a flesh tone. And I'm going to do her lips in the pink also. I'll show you why in a minute. And blush a little bit here. Uh, some people seem to like more nose. Uh, I can live with just a suggestion of a nose. And I've noticed that some of you actually draw them in. Um, if you're going to really, uh, on my stuff, I give you permission. You heard it here. If you're going to do the nose in, and especially on some of my, my more cartoony images, if you, can, if you have a way to edit, edit this out. That little bit that tells you where the end of the nose is, take that away. And then do your nose the way you want to do it. Otherwise, you end up with the end of the nose way up here between their eyes, and it looks weird. I mean, it's just not wonderful. So that's just my opinion. You know, take it or leave it. Yeah, let's put a little bit more. This is pink paint now. And I never know how these are going to come out on the video. Um... In person, it's way more um, blended. 
and sometimes it picks up on the camera. So you just have to take my word for it. Okie doke. Uh, this is a more uh, terracotta sort of color. It probably is an ochre. Soft, 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 soft. It has to be, if it's too, if it just starts and stops, it's just not good. Uh, you don't want a big square of blue, <coughs> excuse me, above their eye, unless they're a clown. So try to... Um, Soft, 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 soft. Um, you can use um, what's called a shading stomp. They come in all different sizes. They're a gray paper. Monique uses these a lot. She uses these to blend her things using uh, mineral spirits. I haven't gotten into the mineral spirits yet. You can also use a blender pencil or a burnisher. They all work. Uh, this one I like because it doesn't put any color down. It just blends. <clears throat> Sorry, it's allergy season and I have a toad. It's not even a frog, it's a toad. I took my pills and did all my stuff and it still drives me nuts. Okay, see that helps. It blends. I mean, it's nice and you get very little color transfer. Uh, to the paper, so that tells you it's it's okay. You're just moving it around. This is that light magenta, and I just love this color. It's so soft. Okay. So she's not going to end up <clears throat> quite as painted as some of the others may have. I'm going to go to a real brown brown now. Again, it's a sienna color. The siennas are redder, so it's a warm color. And I'm going to start my eye with this. Have her brown eyes. This is a fun thing to do. So many blue eyes on work, I see. Let's give her brown. Under here. This is, it's a concept that it's very hard for me to get across. <clears throat> but when I sculpt with a pencil, when I go in with a pencil, I'm being tentative with the pencil. And what I'm doing is I'm asking the pencil to push back. Remember, dark pushes back, light brings it forward. So with pencils, you have to leave your light and you just have to do a lot of pushing. Um, so you're sculpting to keep your light area. See, this center here around her nose is almost white. Um, and then we're, everything else we're doing is pushing back. See, I can really put a fairly good shadow here under her hair. Now, I have this brown in my hand, so I'm going to give her brown hair. So see how I do this? I just go basically kind of on a diagonal. <clears throat> I'm having trouble with my camera. I'll have to edit. Um, I'm going to smooth this out later. So I know this looks strange.
Okay, remember, I'm leaving my light. I'm worried way more about the um, the light staying there and putting the dark in. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to stick with my warm browns. This almost gives her an auburn undertone. Now, there was a lot of discussion. We just had our party this weekend, and I rolled out some new images. Uh, a while back, I rolled out an image that's called Musetta. It's uh, a lady with huge, huge hair and curls, 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 curls. And I basically did it so that uh, what I call the flickers. Those of you who have learned uh, on Kit and Cloud or how to do that wonderful technique, and I guess it's called flicking. <coughs> I can't do it, but I never have gone to the classes. I need to think about doing that. Um... I did that so that there would be something that you'd have a lot of room to practice on. And it, to me, it's really good when you're practicing. See, push back. This needs to be pushed back. This needs to come forward. So you want to darken both sides of it. It's, um, it's an arc. You start dark at the ends like this, and then you go light and light. So you're leaving your light. And then, of course, you would smooth this out. I'm just giving you an idea. This is just on a white paper, so it's going to be a little more um, harsh. But you see? And then just blend it a little bit. See? It's that simple. Okay, see how that gives you the illusion that that is sticking up in the center. Okay. The little circles really blend. I mean, they really give you that soft feel. Pencil, depending on the paper, I, I like a paper that has more tooth. That's the surface. It's not smooth. Really, really smooth paper is called plate finish. Uh, that means that they hot press it so that it comes out really smooth. And then vellum is what they call cold press. And that comes out with a little more tooth. The tooth of the paper and uh, watercolor paper. I don't know if you've ever worked with watercolor paper, but watercolor paper can have a lot of tooth. Um, you learn to work with it. It grabs the pigments and um, you learn to, to work with the texture. The texture is your friend. You want that texture in your paper. So, it's just a matter of uh, style, ultimately. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to warm this up a little bit. I don't want her to go blonde, but I want there to be a feeling of light in her hair. And then I'm going to do something that is going to absolutely scare you, I think. Maybe not. Oh, anyway, I had started a thought and I didn't finish it. Uh, this past weekend, uh, I released a new image, which is called Il Segreto, The Secret. Um, it has even more curls. She's really got a hairdo on her. Remember that color I was just using? I'm going to use it here, too. I'm going to keep this very warm. This is normally an image I think of as cool, but I'm going to make this one warm. 
Anyway, a lot of people have looked at that and have even just said right on Facebook, this is way out of my league. I can't even try this. That image, I'm telling you, that image is just this image, but more of it. It's, it's as simple as that. I'll try to remember to show you that image before I end this video. And we're gonna, we want to keep our, see that arc across, but I have to also fight this and push her hair forward too, because we want your eye to know that her hair is not inside the hat, it's on top of the hat. Okay, and then this one, all one pencil too. Remember, you can get a lot of hues, shades out of one pencil. Just depends on how you use it and how hard you push. Now, I don't want this color to just live here and in her hair. Uh, it's going to be way too strange. So I'm going to decide that her outfit is also this color. Uh, it's not it's not an unknown color for this period. You know, you have to think about periods when you're in the costume business or if you're trying to do historically accurate things. <clears throat> would they have been able to dye this color? Yeah, by this point they would have. We were in the industrial age. I'm also going to put this here. Um, this would be a very... Now very expensive silk flower so we're gonna say i'm gonna show you on this one i'm gonna do another tutorial just i think on flowers <clears throat> sometimes those flowers get really heavy folks um flowers tend to want to be uh, lighter i mean you get those dark red red roses you can hardly see the detail on them in life you know so not something I use too many of in my artwork, but um, anyway, more on that later. So see, I just put a little of this toward the center. So see how this color now marches around? The most important part of this, and any, any composition is going to be the same, you want to decide what your center of interest is. In this case, it's the face. In a portrait, it's always the face. That's where you want the eye to go. So you want to have your colors march around and always bring you back right here to the uh, to the face. It's the most important part. Okay. I'm going to use a greenish gray. And I'm going to darken her eye with that. This is a warmer color. So it tends to keep my warm palette going, but in relation to the other palette colors that I'm using today, it uh, it's cooler. Okay, now I'm going to use this color in her veils. This would have been something like boil. You know what boil is? You know, fabrics are called, called different things in different countries. So, boil is sort of like um, uh, linen, soft, very transparent linen. It's real popular for a while in the 60s again. Uh, these, by the way, this is a lorgnette. It's a little pair of glasses. Very common. They didn't really use them as much as it was an affectation. It was just a, a thing to say, I'm wealthy enough to have these. It's before the age of lens crafter. Okay. I'm going to cool down a little bit. 
bring some blue in a cool will help concentrate the warm around her face. And a little here. So again, this pushes back, darker pushes back, light brings it forward. And if you work this soft enough, uh, you just have to get that feeling of you're just burnishing over the top with this softer blue you will get shadows you won't really get color you just get this feeling of softer shadows now think about it we have at least three or four browns yellow and kind of a reddish bricky color in her hair I'm just underlaying this because this fur cannot be this color. It's got to be um, warmer than this. So I'm going to have to work over the top of this uh, blue to, uh, to warm the color up. This is actually kind of a violet color. Um, violet is the complementary color of yellow on the color wheel. And I will, I've been asked several times now to do a just a basic art uh, video, so I will. I will do that uh, soon. But here, uh, primaries are red, blue, and yellow because that means they're just primary. They can't be made out of anything else. Secondaries are colors that are made out of prim primaries. So violet is made out of red and blue. Uh, green is made out of yellow and blue. And orange is made out of red and yellow. So that's your secondary colors. And then you go to tertiary and a lot of other things. There's books written on color theory, so I think most people are good with color if they don't push it. Okay, remember I said this was the complementary yellow, so this would have been an apt color to trim her yellow-orange suit with. Also a very common color in the late 17s and early 18s. Sea anemones. You get this color from, in the days of natural dyes, you got this color from sea anemones. It will give her purple tassels on her. Used a lot of tassels in these days. Um, they were weight. They would put uh, an uh, iron or a lead ball in the top of the tassel and then wrap silk thread over the top of it. And that would um, weight this to her shoulders. Made them harder to steal. When people were walking down the street, they would just grab your furs or grab your jewelry and run away with them. So Now, <laughs> It, again, I can look at my screen here and I can kind of see how this looks to you. <clears throat> in person, it's much more um, intricate, I think is maybe the word I want. Um, but I'm now getting these wonderful soft blends of where you can tell that it's many, many colors together. And uh, I just can't tell you how much I love that. 
so arty. It just really is. I mean, that's what it is. It's arty. It has this beautiful painterly, um, impressionistic almost quality when there's all these colors sort of dancing. And, you know, it's funny. I pick up colors. I just picked up that green on Instinct. Um, Rembrandt, um, Lawrence, not so much, um, but uh, Gainsborough, all, if you look at their paintings up close, their portraits, lots of green, lots and lots of green. It does interesting things when you use uh, green appropriately. And we'll warm up there for a bit. Once again, this is 1911 Stroller in the French style. And it is in my Zibit shop under hats. There's a whole section of nothing but hat ladies. That's all they are, ladies with amazing hats. And I have started, I haven't finished it, but I have started to actually divide those out now, because there are so many of them, um, into periods. So there'll be 1900s hats, 1800s hats, 1700s hats. Okay, now, as this stands, this is what's called a floater. So I imagine that um, most designers would either fussy cut this out and move this on to um, a different paper. Uh, if you were going to take this and uh, frame this, you would probably not want to leave it floating. You want a little hint of a background. And again, I don't have any, uh, I'm just using the shading stomp. There's no mineral spirits or anything on this. This is just paper moving. You know, the, the pencils are waxy, so when you create friction, it melts that wax. It's exactly what it does and moves the pigments around. Okay, so again, if I was going to frame this, uh, I would want, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cool sort of a French blue, Williamsburgy blue, and uh, I'm putting the cool behind. Remember, I talked earlier about this. The reason that I um, want to put cool away from her face is we did this really warm palette. So I want to keep that warmth right around her face and um, cool a little bit away from it. Just put a little bit of this on the edge. That'll help curl this flower over a little bit more. Darken down in here. Okay. So that gives you a pretty good idea. I wanted to show you the other image that I spoke about. And again, that's this is Il Zagretto. You can see, I mean, this is quite a quite a bit of image here, all this hair. But if you really take this and break it down, it's the same. See, just more of it. This has a little bit, 
and this has a lot of it. So uh, a lot of people like to um, color just for the sake of coloring. It calms them down. So, uh, you know, think about that. Give yourself a chance. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed this. So this is sort of a warm palette. And uh, I'll be doing some other things. Um, I have a lot of new images and there's some specific things. S things come up when I'm um, doing the videos. I just chat, you know. And um, I hope that doesn't drive you too crazy. I know my mind tends to wander and I go from thing to thing. But... Uh, I enjoy doing it, and I remember little tips and things as I um, am talking to you. So, um, sorry, I was looking in the screen, and I looked at this, and I just had to go get my navy blue pencil. I love my navy blue pencil. It does so many wonderful things, and I just wanted that flower to pop a little bit more. Anyway, more later. See you soon. Bye.